What do you give a sick bird? A tweetment, a tweetment. All right, guys, let's start our lesson today. We are on lesson 10. All right, so let's take a look at our, our first anchor chart. So remember, we have verbs. Verbs are words that uh, mean something. It's an action word. So to hop, to jump, to skip, to blink, to breathe. So anything that you do, that's like a verb. That is a verb. Now let's take a look at some, um, some verbs that describe these birds. So in the first column, we have strong verbs. In the second column, we have weak verbs. We can use weak verbs, but when it comes to writing, you want strong verbs. You want to paint a picture in the reader's mind. And then in the third column, we have bird name. We have the bird name. So let's take a look at the first bird. We have a sparrow. Some weak verbs that can describe a sparrow are they hop, crack, or peck. Some strong verbs that describe a sparrow are leap, bash, jab. Let's take a look at the hummingbird. They can either drink or gulp. The macaw can cut or what? Tear. The eagle can either take or peel. You can also use stronger verbs like snatch and strip. The woodpecker, what is the weak verb? It can hit or the strong verb, it can pound. Let's take a look at the skimmer. The skimmer can tap, chop, or close. Stronger verbs that we can use are strike, slice, snap. The heron can take or it can seize. The pelican can either fall or dive. And the crossbill can either open or pry. All right, let's load our bow and arrow. I can participate in a science talk to show my learning about how a bird's beak helps it survive. All right, so let's take a look at our habit of character anchor chart. So habits of character that we have are respect, integrity, empathy, and compassion. Take a look at compassion. Do you see how it's bold print? It's a little bit darker than the rest of these words. So we're gonna focus on compassion today. I notice when people are sad or upset and reach out to help them. So when someone tells you like, oh, I lost my dog, you're not like, oh, cool. No, you have to assess what they just said and you notice that they're sad because do you think someone's gonna be like, yeah, I lost my dog. No, they're probably gonna be like, I lost my dog. They're probably gonna be crying. So you notice that they're sad or upset, and then you, you would say, oh gosh, is there anything I can do? Or have you tried putting out search po or lost and found posters? So our goal today is to focus on compassion. I notice when people are sad or upset and reach out to help them. Think about now, think about the people around you with this whole coronavirus going on. Unfortunately, some people aren't doing all right. They, some people lose, lost their jobs. Some people maybe are just having a hard time not being able to socialize with their friends. And so you gotta notice this and you have to kind of think about how can you, how can you help them? Maybe you can give them, if it's someone in your family that you live with, you can give them a hug. Um, if it's someone who's far away, maybe like a grandparent, you can call them and, and tell them a funny joke. Tell them that bird joke. Try to do something to help, help them out. Reach out to them. All right, friends, let's take a look at our learning target. I can participate in a science talk to show my learning about how a bird's beak helps it survive. So let's take a look at this blue bubble. It says, what does it mean to add on to someone else's ideas? So unfortunately, we're not in the classroom and we don't have people that we can stand up hand up pair with. 
pair up with, but you guys have your parents, maybe siblings, maybe a animal um, or a toy. Maybe you guys can talk with a toy. So I want you to kind of just talk out loud, hear your voice, you know, talk out loud. And I want us to kind of go over some of the stuff that we've been learning. So thinking about how to add on to someone else's ideas. So with this slide, it says, how does a bird speak help it survive? So if you were to add on to someone else's ideas, you could say, hey, I think he or she means, um, you can also use, this makes me think. So if someone talks and then you're like, oh, I have a comment too. So you say, this makes me think, that all birds fly or let's see how does a bird's beak help it survive if that's the question i would say hmm this makes me think that the bird has this beak in order to reach the nectar so if you guys were like oh the hummingbirds have long beaks and i'm gonna say oh this makes me think if the hummingbird has a long beak that it allows the hummingbird to reach inside the flower to be able to collect the nectar. Another sentence starter we could use is, I would like to add, so if you guys have a comment, you can say, I would like to add. So you guys can role play. If you guys actually wanna get like two action figures or two dolls, you can have two of them um, participate in your science talk. You can use someone from the class's name or you can make up a name. So let's take a look at our anchor charts that we, we dealt with last week. So last week, how do birds' beaks, um, how do birds use their beaks to survive? So let's go over this information once more. So let's take a look at the first bird. What type of bird is this? A flamingo. A flamingo's beak looks like what? It's upside down. Why? Special strainers in the beak filter out water to help them eat tiny plants and animals. Let's take a look at the next bird, the skimmer. What type of beak does a skimmer have? The bottom bill is longer than the top. Why? The bottom beak is longer than the top to slice the water below the surface. Okay, yeah, I, I remember that from last week. Let's take a look at the third bird, the spoonbill. What kind of beak does the spoonbill have? Let's take a look at this column because we already made this anchor chart last week. It says that the spoonbills have flat paddle-like beaks. Why do, they, why do they have flat paddle-like beaks? Their beaks snap shut as, they, as their beak swishes back and forth. So remember when they fill something, they snap it shut. Let's take a look at our next anchor chart. So what type of bird is this? The heron. What type of beak does a heron have? A stabbing beak. How does this beak help it survive? It stabs it into the water. It stabs into the water and hopefully, they do this quite frequently, they stab into a fish. All right, let's take a look at this next bird. What is this bird? The pelican. What, can the pel what kind of beak does a pelican have? A plunging beak. And how does this beak help the pelican fly or survive? The pelican, its beak crashes. It, well, the beak is so wide that basically the pelican crashes open mouth into the water. It collects all this water and hopefully there's a fish in the water because then it releases the water and the fish are left in the beak. All right, last bird. What type of bird is this? A crossbill. What type of beak do they have? A prying beak. And how does this help the bird survive? It can pry apart the scales of a pine cone. I like that. Yeah, it can help pry the pine cone to search for its food. So what I want you to do, set up, like I said, you can talk or you can role play with your two action figures or two dolls. And try to talk to one another. Try to hold a conversation. You could say like, oh, the flamingo has an upside down beak. And then say, if this is person A talking, you'd say, the flamingo has an upside down beak. And this is person B, 
Person A, person B. Person B is in like, oh, yes, it has an upside down beak because of special strainers in the beak to filter out water to help them eat tiny plants and animals. And then person A was like, I would like to add, I would like to add that flamingos are pink because of the shrimp that they eat. And then person B is going to say, this makes me think that flamingos eat quite a bit of shrimp. All right, guys, so have fun with role playing. If you guys talk to a classmate, call a classmate tonight. You guys can even talk about this on the on your phone call.